I'm not alone. I'm not the only person who had to deal with something like this. I know it's very common for working professionals to have to miss important dates and important times and important family moments because of work. Welcome to the Guilt-Free Money Podcast. I'm your host, Cherry Tung, for all things financial independence, early retirement, and mental health awareness. I went from slaving away at my corporate job to becoming a millionaire, then getting depression and fired from my job, which finally gave me the sign and courage to retire from corporate altogether at 25 years old. If you are ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to break free from your 9-to-5 identity because you are so much more than your job. Growing up as an Asian American, there's always this whole, all these misconceptions about mental health and all these stigma around mental health. And so it's extremely hard for me to admit that there's something wrong with my mental health, you know? And till this day, I haven't really told my own mother about this because I don't think she'll understand. I remember one time I was telling her how I am seeing a therapist and her response was laughing to my dad and saying, haha, I can't believe she is seeing a therapist, like our daughter, like someone who's just so, you know, seems like there's nothing wrong with her and there's nothing wrong going on in her life. Someone who's so silly, can you believe that she's seeing a therapist? That was the moment when I realized that I can't even tell my own parents about my mental health issues. For those of you who might be struggling with either mental health issues or just not in a good state, maybe you're going through maybe a season that is not so warm anymore. And I just want to let you know that you are definitely not alone. I went through all these meds because even my doctor didn't know what was wrong with me. Let me rewind the clock to when did I discover something was wrong. Basically, I was, you know, facing with the tragic death of two of my really close relatives, one of whom raised me when I was a little girl, and I couldn't even attend his funeral because I was stuck here in the United States working where my grandpa was in Shanghai at the time. It was busy season for me. I really couldn't make it to his funeral because it's busy season and work obviously was really important to me at the time. And so I couldn't even see him for the very last time. That was the main trigger of my depression. And I was just trying to push all my feelings down. I was just trying to tell myself that, oh, this is just temporary. Like, you're going to get over this. You're not going to be sad forever. And sure, like, I swallowed everything and I thought everything's going to be fine. But then I realized that no matter how much you bottle up, these feelings can come up again. And that's what happened to me. Sure, like, I managed to swallow everything and push through a busy season and still be highly functional at my job. But in the end, I felt so sad and empty. And I realized that Not only does money not buy happiness, but money can also sometimes be the reason that prevents you from getting happiness. Because why was I so hardcore focused at work? What does work really bring me? Does it really bring me like any intrinsic happiness? Or was it just bringing me external happiness? Like, would I still be working at my job that hard if I wasn't paid? Probably not. Like, I know deep inside that I wouldn't be working this job if I wasn't paid at all. And so that's the thing. I realized that it's so funny that I miss my grandpa, the one who raised me when I was a little baby. I missed his funeral because I was at my nine to five. Like how ridiculous of a reason that is. And I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only person who had to deal with something like this. I know it's very common for working professionals to have to miss important dates and important times and important family moments because of work. I'm interrupting my own episode to share my guilt-free money guide with you. It features the four key steps I took to achieve financial freedom and early retirement at 25 years old. Simply head over to cherrytone.co forward slash roadmap to get your copy of my free guide. That was the trigger. That was the starting point. But of course, COVID happened. And when COVID happened, I was actually in China visiting my family and, you know, talking to my grandma and making sure she's okay. But at that time, again, like the whole world shut down in China and we had to self-quarantine. I literally 
had no outside exposure. So I was in China and I came back and I had to quarantine again. And then the whole world had to quarantine. Like first I had to self quarantine and then the whole world had to quarantine. And so I basically had no outside exposure for months. And I was all right. I was like trying to keep everything in for the first couple weeks of quarantine. But the second week of quarantine really hit. And I realized that I can't really do this anymore. At the time when I was filming the day in my life video, that was already on the verge of my breakdown. At days, I would just open my computer, do my work at my nine to five job, and I would start crying. Like I would literally uncontrollably cry over what? Over Excel spreadsheets. That's how bad it was. Like I would cry over Excel spreadsheets. It's so ridiculous thinking back because like, what is so touching about an Excel spreadsheet? But if you are depressed, you would know that sometimes you just cry over nothing. You just cry over the, the pure fact that you're living, but you're not feeling happiness anymore. You just can't feel happiness. There's like this dark cloud over you and everything just feels hopeless, just feels meaningless. And you're just looking at your life right now and you just feel like your life is slowly, slowly burning away and there's nothing that you can do to stop it. And you just feel like, what is the meaning of anything? What is the point of anything? That was the question that I keep asking myself. What is the point of everything? What is the point of me like burning my life away for this job that clearly doesn't really care about my well-being, that clearly doesn't really care about whether or not I spend time with my grandpa, even on his funeral. And so that was my second breaking point. And I was forced to really take time off. I finally noticed that something's wrong. No one would cry over an Excel spreadsheet. So I actually asked the doctor about this and said, hey, doctor, like, what is wrong with me? So I went to a general practitioner who referred me to a psychiatrist. And then I also seeked out to find my own therapist because that was recommended by my psychiatrist. After a couple of sessions, in, in the beginning, I was very, very anti-meds. I was like, I don't want to take meds because I'm just really worried that it's going to mess up my brain. I really care about how my brain works. I really care about whether or not I can function and think as a normal human being, quote unquote normal. But I realized that this is kind of like getting a cold or getting a flu, a really bad flu. It is okay to admit that you need external help for you to get better. And if I had to choose between feeling depressed and maybe even suicidal and taking meds, you know, compare that to taking meds, then I'd rather take meds. I'd rather get that external help to prevent me from getting worse conditions, right? Worse symptoms. So in the end, I was like, okay, fine. I'll take meds. I'll do whatever it takes to get better. And things did not get better. That's why I had all these meds in front of me because things did not get better. I had to try so many different meds for so many months, for maybe like over nine months until I finally found something that somewhat worked for me. I don't want to mention which med because I don't want to make people self-diagnose and think that they want to take the exact same med. But it took me a long time to figure out what med combination works for me. And I just remember during the nine months, I actually had to take time off of work because I just couldn't function normally anymore. I had to like stop myself from crying, first of all, like just crying over Excel spreadsheets. And in the morning, I couldn't even wake up. Sometimes I would sleep until noon and it's not because I'm lazy, but because I'm depressed. And it's hard for me to admit that because I really pride myself as a really highly functional human being, but depression just made me not really that productive anymore. And that really made me sad. My Myers-Briggs test shows that I'm INTJ and INTJ people are usually very on top of things, very organized, very productive. But because of my depression, I was very unproductive. And when I say unproductive, it's very relative because I was still, you know, um, uploading YouTube videos weekly. I was still, you know, posting IG content. So I still did something to make myself feel more sane. But overall, I was just not myself anymore. And I know that because I know what I was like prior to all of this. I know that. And so during the nine months, really, really like I'm just living in this dark, dark place. And I just felt hopeless. It's hard for me to describe exactly how I felt. I did a lot of meditating. I did a lot of journaling. I did a lot of self-reflection. And I really thought about my life. Like, 
Sure, you can say that I made it. I'm a millionaire. I have all these income streams. At that time, I have 17 income streams.、Um, if I wanted to, I can turn my business into a multi six figure or even seven figure business if I really wanted to. But because I was limited by the ceiling called depression, I couldn't even be productive. I couldn't even do the basic things that because there's this depression thing that is on top of my head that is stopping me from really being productive and stopping me from. Progressing to the next step. It was a very, very dark period of my time, and right now, of course, I'm still taking meds, so I'm not completely fine. But I just want to tell you that having depression is not the end, but it's like getting a cold. Like we shouldn't think of it as something so, so stigmatized, right? We shouldn't discredit ourselves, especially if we're diagnosed already by a professional. We shouldn't be like, "Oh, I'm just lazy." Instead of saying, "Oh, I just have depression," and it's okay to admit that you have depression. It's okay to admit that yes, you are sick. And it's so funny because depression is such a hidden thing. It's such a like in your brain thing. No one else can know what is going on. Like if you have a cold, you have physical symptoms, and you cough, you sneeze, and people know you have a cold. If you have a broken leg, people can see you have a broken leg, and people know that you're handicapped. But when something is happening in your brain, when you have this chemical imbalance in your brain, no one really knows. It's just all in your head, and that is what makes it so difficult for people to understand and comprehend what is going on because they can't see what is going on, and sometimes even yourself. You yourself, you question yourself and you second guess yourself because even you can't exactly show people that you are depressed because you can feel it but you can't really express it. And one trap that some people fall into is they want physical evidence to show people how depressed they are. So that's how people get into you know self harm and all that. Of course, that's not good because. If you need to prove yourself that you're depressed to someone, then that someone does not deserve to be in your life. I'm gonna say it again. Like, if you have to show evidence that you're depressed to that someone, this someone does not deserve to be in your life. Do not fall into this trap. You don't need to prove that you are depressed. You just need to work with a professional, work with a doctor to get better. That's the only job that you have. You don't need to prove it to anyone. And、um, of course, like another side story is, I also felt like a lot of people at my workplace did not believe that I was depressed, which also made things worse because it's like I can feel the passive aggressiveness in their attitude when they're interacting with me, and it's almost like they don't believe that there's something wrong with me because I was still, you know. I still had all my limbs, and I sometimes would upload YouTube videos. And they thought because I was doing this, I was well, but I was not well. That was just my way of making myself feel better as someone who was severely depressed. But I don't think they understood this, and I constantly found myself trying to seek for their approval. In the end, that job also did not work out, and、um, I'm not gonna go into the details of why it didn't work out. All I can say is that it has nothing to do with my job performance. I actually went back to work again, but it doesn't have to do with my job performance. That job is another story. But I just want to say, like, this can be a taboo thing if you make it. But the first thing that you have to do is self acceptance and understand that you are not alone. I felt so hopeless. I felt like there's nothing worth living for. And today, it's safe for me to say that I felt. Or I feel a lot more hopeful than before. So there is definitely hope. You are not alone. So don't let this be your sentence. This can't be your sentence. This is your start. This is your beginning. This is not the end. So let this be your beginning. Let this be the one of the many struggles that you will overcome. Because I know you will. That's what happened for me, and I know that is exactly what will happen for you. You will overcome this, and you're going to look back and be like, "Wow, I am so strong." This is such a great story to tell to others, to empower others, because I have done it. I know you can do it. So, this story is dedicated to those of you who are battling invisible battles. I know how difficult it is to be fighting these invisible battles and not feeling understood, but I'm telling you that. Hey, I see you. I understand that you are fighting these invisible battles. I know how tough it can be. I can empathize with you, 
and I'm also fighting my invisible battle. And here, like, here is my invisible battle. Thank you for listening to my story. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode, tagging me at cherrytung.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.